The R-7 was a Soviet missile developed during the Cold War and the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile. The R-7 made 28 launches between 1957 and 1961, but was never deployed operationally. A derivative, the R-7A, was deployed from 1959 to 1968. To the west it was known by the NATO reporting name SS-6 Apwood and within the Soviet Union by the Grau Index, 8K-71, in modified form. It launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, into orbit and became the basis for the R-7 family which includes Sputnik, Luna, Molnya, Vostok, and Voskhod space launches, as well as later Soyuz variants. The widely used nickname for the R-7 launcher, Samyorka, means the 7 in Russian. Description. The R-7 was 34 meters long, 3.02 meters in diameter and weighed 280 metric tons, it had two stages, powered by rocket engines using liquid oxygen and kerosene and capable of delivering its payload up to 8,800 kilometers, with an accuracy of around 5 kilometers. A single thermonuclear warhead was carried with a nominal yield of 3 megatons of TNT. The initial launch was boosted by four strap-on liquid rocket boosters making up the first stage, with a central sustainer motor powering through both the first and the second stage. Each strap-on booster included two vernier thrusters and the core stage included four. The guidance system was inertial with radio control of the vernier thrusters. Development Design work began in 1953 at Tokay B-1 in Kaliningrad in Moscow Oblast and other divisions with the requirement for a two-stage missile of 170 metric tons with a range of 8,000 kilometers carrying a 3,000 kilograms warhead. Following first ground tests in late 1953 the initial design was heavily reworked and the final design was not approved until May 1954 and Korolev reportedly reviewed more than 100 design proposals. In 1954 draft project was completed, for the first time in the history of the development of the conceptual design firm Sergei Pavlovich Korolev was created, received the room volume 14. This volume was developed under the leadership of the Arkady Ilyich Ostashev and devoted to the organization of test missiles. Contrary to statements that the R-7 was based largely on experience and assistance of German scientists, the missile is noteworthy for looking beyond past achievements that had used German ideas. For example, instead of using jet vanes for control, which increased resistance generated at the engine nozzle exhaust outlet, the R-7 used special control engines. These same engines served as the last stage's vernier thrusters. Because of clustered design, each booster had its own propellant tanks. The design team had to develop a system to regulate the propellant component consumption ratio and to synchronize the consumption between the boosters. Starting from the R-1, which was a copy of the German V-2, a freestanding missile was launched from a horizontal pad. It turned out that assembling a cluster of a central core and four boosters on the pad is almost impossible without it falling apart. Also, a wind gust could knock the missile off of the pad. The solution was to eliminate the pad and to suspend the entire rocket in the trusses that bear both vertical weight load as well as horizontal horizontal wind forces. The launch system simulated flight conditions with strap-on boosters pushing the central core forward. The new missile's Grau index was 8K71. The first flight-ready vehicle was delivered to Baikonur Cosmodrome on 1 May and flown on 15. A fire broke out in the Block D strap-on almost immediately at liftoff. 
It broke away from the booster at T plus 8, 8 seconds, which crashed 400 kilometers downrange. The next attempt on the 11th of June, an electrical shot caused the missile to start rolling uncontrollably and disintegrate 33 seconds after liftoff. The first successful long flight of 6,000 kilometers was made on the 21st of August 1957. The dummy warhead impacted in the Pacific Ocean and five days later, TASS announced that the Soviet Union had successfully tested a multi-stage intercontinental ballistic missile. A modified version of the missile placed Sputnik 1 in orbit from Baikonur on 4 October 1957 and Sputnik 2 on 3 November 1957. The next ICBM test took place on 30 January 1958, but the strap-ons failed to separate cleanly and damaged plumbing in the core stage, which lost thrust and impacted far off target. These early flights revealed assorted design flaws in the R-7 which necessitated multiple modifications to the missile. Testing continued through December 1959, and the last original 8K-71 flew on 27 February 1961. The additional development resulted in the 8K-74, which was lighter, had better navigation systems, more powerful engines, extended its range to 12,000 km by carrying more fuel, and increased payload to 5,370 kg. In addition, the missile was designed to be easier to take apart and service. The warhead was tested on Novaya Zemlya in October 1957 and again in 1958, yielding an estimated 2.9 mt. Aside from the initial Sputnik launches, the HK-71 formed the basis of the 8K-72 booster used for the first-generation lunar probes. However, six out of nine lunar probes launched on the 8K-72 fail, combined with the failed Sputnik launch on 27 April 1958. This brought the booster's total space launch record to six successes in 13 attempts. The improved 8K-74 would then form the basis for the later Vostok and Molnir boosters, greatly increasing reliability. Operational history. The first strategic missile unit became operational on 9 February 1959 at Plesisk in northwest Russia. On 15 December 1959 the R-7 missile was tested at Plesisk for the first time. The missiles were fully deployed by 1962. Total service was limited to no more than 10 nuclear-armed missiles active at any time. A single launch pad was operational at Baikonur and from 6 to 8 were in operation at Plesisk. The costs of the system were high, mostly due to the difficulty of constructing in remote areas the large launch sites required. At one point, each launch site was projected to cost 5% of the total Soviet defense budget. However, these huge costs were not unique for a first-generation missile and the U.S. experienced similar problems. Besides the cost, the missile system faced other operational challenges. With the U-2 overflights, the huge R-7 launch complexes could not be hidden and therefore could be expected to be destroyed quickly in any nuclear war. Also, the R-7 took almost 20 hours to prepare for launching, and it could not be left on alert for more than a day due to its cryogenic fuel system. Therefore, the Soviet force could not be kept on permanent alert and could have been subject to an airstrike before launching. Additionally the huge payload for which it was designed, adapted to early heavy H-bombs, became irrelevant with the coming of lighter bomb technology. 
The limitations of the R-7 pushed the Soviet Union into rapidly developing second-generation missiles which would be more viable weapons systems. The R-7 was phased out of military service by 1968. While the R-7 turned out to be impractical as a weapon, it became the basis for a series of Soviet expendable space launch vehicles. The derivatives of the R-7 missile became successful space launch vehicles which are still being used in modified form. Variants SS-6 SAP would need a reporting name for all versions of the R-7 variants identified by suffix letter on the name portion. R-7 Semyorka, first launch the 15th of May 1957, last launch the 27th of February 1961, 27 launch attempts, 18 of which were successful. R-7A Semyorka, first launch the 23rd of December 1959, last launch the 25th of July 1967, 21 launch attempts, 18 of which were successful. The Grau designation for the R-7 Semyorka missile The Grau designation for the R-7A Semyorka missile 8K-71PS Sputnik 1 launch Soyuz FG and note much developed variant of the R-7 are still active, Soyuz U, Soyuz FG, Soyuz 2, 1A, Soyuz 2, 1B, operators, Soviet Union The strategic missile troops was the only operator of the Semyorka, 